Today we're looking at this 2018 exhibition match between Japan and England. Oh, how about that? It's even better. Count of the day, count of the hour. That is sensational. So England with the ball, wearing the white and red, versus Japan in the black and white with some uh, nice artwork on it. Uh, the theory of this game, this is at the 2018 New South Wales State Cup. Um, and both teams were invitational teams to come and join us uh, to play in the tournament. However, they just couldn't play finals. Instead of finals, they played against each other uh, on the Sunday morning, and this is this game. So Japan strike first. Excuse me. <clears throat> just a middle-middle dump. Step in. Nice flat ball to the link. We'll go through this. So here's the dump, middle, middle. Very, very popular play. Middle, middle. Always remember you must step in around the other middle to run your hole, then your link can run this hole, winger can keep the width. Dummy half will pick up. Your job's to pull corner, and when he does that, you can step the other way from dummy half. If you don't pull corner, the dummy half will just gas you on the short side for a three on two. So he picks up, pulls corner, so he steps back. Now this defender here needed to be on the line moving forward at the time of the dump. But because he's still on the line here, that flat ball is now an option. If he gets off the line, he can interrupt the pass by basically taking an intercept. So if he's, yeah, if he's a little bit further off the line, he can catch that ball and he can still make the touch here. But because he's just probably one meter off the line, this guy hits the hole and he's in. First try goes to Japan. Looks like Japan in again. It's just another middle-middle play. They find a short ball, and then it's through the hands. England are claiming the touch. Very close, this one. So it's another middle-middle. There it is there. They step in around the other middle again. We don't need to go through that again. There's the step because England, again, were pulling short side. The middle's done a very good job here. He stepped forward. Okay, he's putting pressure on him, but he's also covering the gap between the middles. This guy needs to be, this link needs to be up as well. Okay, we shouldn't have the middle up further than our link. Okay, middle's... he Look, he has done well. He has delayed that, that hit as much as he can. But if that link is a little bit more off the line, he makes that touch now. Okay, rather than letting that Japan uh, player catch and then throw a pass. Okay, it was a lucky pass. Okay, but it can be completely scratched off if you're off that line. That goes for the winger too. The winger could have been off the line as well. But you really want the winger and the link a lot higher than the middle. So short side quickie. Look, this is unlucky. This is really unlucky. I'll just go back. I'm going back slow. I apologize. So what's gone wrong? And then they reacted to it correctly. So they've pulled corner. But this player here... So middle, middle, quickie, you dump it on the middle, you step short side, you get the ball back. Yeah. We all know middle, middle, quickie. Um, he needs to be talking to his outside player to release. He needs to say that he's all good, he's got this, so you can move out onto your player, who is very wide, and thus the winger can do the same. We obviously can't hear it. I don't know if, he's, if there was communication, but because this player is sucked so far in, the winger has made a judgment call to react, I'm going to get up and sniper this play. Which, in theory, that, that can work. Um, it's more common or more appropriate if we just get this player to be a little bit wider. Um, but yeah, he does do a good read. He gets a good read on that short ball, but he comes up and it's just, a t it's just a miss. It's probably like an inch in it. So that's just unlucky from England. So England have got some nice roll here. And itchy nose. This is just nice... Nice eyes up, nice ball movement. So what they try to do here is a middle fading for the link. Uh, they've probably identified that Japan is super tight in the middle, so they're not going to be able to punch through with another runner like a rooster or, or something like that or a dummy half run. So what they're going to do is they've tried an out ball. So this guy's running straight into the last minute will angle out uh, in hoping to catch the Japan players. Well, he knows. Catch the uh, Japan players running inwards or wrong footed, and then they will just gas him for speed. The outline, however, is a little bit... It's not the greatest outline. Okay, he needed to be running a little bit further lateral. He's running a little bit too straight. This player then is able to recover, but very close. This guy needs to release because his inside play is all good. Thus, the winger can release as well. Winger's caught in a little bit too far. 
There's the pass over the top. And it's back, and it's just through the hands. That's just drawing and passing. Nice try to England. Yeah, England look like to have another one. It's a middle, middle again. Second phase. Awesome. It's a middle, middle. Already spoken about that one. Japan, once again, are nice and tight. So what they could have run is a reverse quickie where this player steps hard, lateral, and gets the ball immediately. And all he has to do is outrun this player for a three on two. But just as effective, dummy half takes off, beats this player here who pulls corner, and then they just go through. Through the hands. It's a nice bullet pass, actually. Okay. So the winger has got a read on this. The Japan, Japan winger. So they've just shut down. He's got a read on this, which is normally a, a great result. However, what uh, what England have done is they've adapted by doing a quick play of the ball. So this player here has seen that, yeah, it's been shut down, but I'm going to quickly run to dummy half because our winger is completely unmarked. If we can get a quick play of the ball, all I have to do is pass it to him because there's no way the defensive winger can turn around and get him. And that's what it calls second phase is. It's the second phase of an attacking move. And it's very effective. So the way to combat that is as defense, if you read it in defense, you shoot in, but you try not try not to make that touch immediately. It's very difficult. Um, Japan are in again, an ML play. So an ML play is a middle link. Middles in the ruck with a link running onto it. He's gonna run forward with the dummy half wrapping around him, and he's gonna attack the offside player. The offside player pulls corner. He has the option to go back open. If the offside player wants to pull open for some reason, then he goes short side for a three on two. Good thing about this play is like a rooster, he's live. So he stepped he stepped back into the open side. Now, this middle, I understand he's trying to cover that gap, which is exactly what we want him to do. But he's a long way over this side of the field. So what I'm thinking is if we go back to the touch, it's a big corner. That person making the touch, he's gone back to like here. That's a real, real big angle of a corner that he's pulled, which means this defender is getting dragged over. But this defender, he's used to being in this channel or roughly around this part of the field. He thinks he's fine. So this corner probably could have been at this angle instead. Okay, you're still body shape if they want to try and gas you on the short side. Your body shape's fine. You can chase. We just didn't need to pull, I don't know if it was a nerve thing where he was worried about getting done for speed, but he's pulled a long way. So he's pulled the middle over, okay? Because the middle can see that he's pulled a hard corner, but the link probably didn't see that. And his reaction is off the line, which is okay, but the short ball, it just made a big hole there. And we can be smart with pulling corner. We don't actually have to touch and then just make a beeline for that angle. Okay, touch, get yourself in a good body position. That's very important. But you can use your first couple of steps to gauge on where they're running. Okay, so I was talking. I think this is a this is a good example of a um. Okay. So the ball went out to the wing, which is rare. Okay, but if you're in this position, as defenders, you want to come up, so you want the middle up. So when they try to recycle the ball back to the middle where most plays come from, they can't do it because it's just going to be a hospital pass. There's going to be no momentum, no dummy half. So this play here actually should be right up in the link's face as well. Middle should be in the middle's faces. Everyone should be just pressing because the ball is no threat if a winger is marked by a winger. Okay, but because there's not, he's not uh, making the touch like a hospital pass now, he sees that there's no chance he can throw the ball inside to a middle and get to dummy half because he's just going to make the touch. So what he does, he makes a, a beeline into the gap there knowing that this guy's going to come over and make the touch. This guy then comes in to make the touch and he steps in front of him which is very clever, as we see. Gets into the gap, perfect dump. Now he's on the mark, but he's got two, two guys touching the side of him, which gives him the right now to step in front of one of the Japanese players, gets the ball back, and now he can attack the short side because the short side defender isn't pulling corner because he's behind him. So now he can attack the short side knowing he definitely has the three on two. This guy might be able to come across, but he's coming across as someone who's running real hard to the short side. This guy all of a sudden has to come in 
which you, you never want to do because normally you have a player pulling corner. And there's the try. But it was really good awareness to get in front of that person making the touch and completely rendering them ineffective in that defensive play. So it's just a sweeper. Again, winger, good honesty. He's missed the touch. But it's a nice, it's a triangle shape. So they, they, a lot of teams practice this triangle shape here because it does give you some options. Um, this player can go down this, and this player can be dummy half. This guy can get an out ball. Uh, they can do, yeah, there's just, just a few things that it can do, but it turns out this, this player at the back here does want to sweep. Um, but this shape means you can run a sweeper both sides. Anyway, they get the inside shoulder in the middle and he runs a sweeper. This is probably the time when you need to pull a big corner is if this player is wide on the sweep, you need ground to cover. Okay. But these guys here, they're back on the line, which is great, but they need to be moving forward off the line. These guys moving forward. Okay. Just by moving forward, you're basically taking the dive out of the equation and you're getting up in the way and making passes more difficult, or you've got to throw the passes earlier, which gives you a lot more time to react. But because they stay on the line, it just allows that to happen. Now we're probably a little bit too tight at the dump. Let's have a look where that far link is. You can see this, this far link is very tight. He can be probably here moving forward rather than here moving at that angle. Or well, he actually wasn't moving at that angle, he was uh, tracking the line. So I'll just play through that again. Oh, I've just opened up Safari. I don't want to open up Safari. I don't like Safari. Unless they want to sponsor a video. <laughs> Try to Japan. Middle, middle. I thought they were splitting the wrong way then. Oh, nice. So it's a middle, middle. Oh, I got confused here because he, he changed his angle at the last minute to get around this middle. And that's allowing the dummy half to, to take off. Now, the dummy half, he knows that he's got a lot of space to run. There's a long way from the line, and he's just going to have a crack on the short side. Now, the toucher is pulling a corner. There's nothing wrong with that. His body shape is fine. But the Japanese guy just got gets him for pace. Now, what I practice with, especially in the juniors, is the position that the link is in, this bloke here, is, is actually really good. But at the last minute, when he gets to... We always just um, run a, a simulation where you're standing still, and I walk past you, and I say, look straight, and tell me when you can't see me. And you usually get to about where this X is, if this defender is looking straight forward. I, yep, I, you're out of my peripheral vision. But you can still touch me. I'm actually closer than you think. So at the last minute, we always teach players just to have a little reach. You've still got your player, but if he just turns and has a little reach, he makes that touch. So that's just, it's a very subtle thing, and it's but it's really effective. Because there's actually not really a lot of threat with this player right at this second, because he can't get a pass away. He's in the way. So turn, reach. If you miss, then you continue on to mark up your player. Once you get over the line, it's actually very difficult because it's like you just got to hold with someone. You don't know where they're going to move. You don't know if they're going to step left, right, forward, backward. Everything is reactive. So another second phase play here from England with a tap back. Claiming a touch, but this is very nice. Let's have a look. There's a lot of things to this one. Now, it looks like that's a rooster. Yep. I'll just cut out... So, so that's a rooster. I've, some apologies, I've, I've, I've mucked up some of the video. This guy's faded the ball. Dummy halves run around the person with the ball. But it's actually a rooster with a block play, which is an effective play. Normally, you would give it to the... This player here would run the inside shoulder of this link, causing him to come in to make that touch where you'd hit the guy out the back. But this time, they're running the second phase play. Bang. And it all of a sudden just becomes a middle-middle. So everything that they ran before that, the, the rooster, was a, a complete decoy of the middle-middle play that they're running now. And what it's done, this link's done good. He's obviously read the play really well, but it's got the middles both into uh, both offside up in the line making the touch. So it might look very cool and like a really tough play. The play itself is actually middle-middle. And there it is there. Middle-middle, everyone just realigns, hits their hole. Winger makes a good read and it's a tap back. 
So they ran out Rooster, Block Play, whatever. You can come up with whatever you want. It's like coming up with a tap off. What comes before the actual play doesn't matter. You just gotta get to that play. Nice ML there. Oh, I think it was an ML. Okay, here's the ML with... Is it an ML? Yeah. Yeah. It's ML with a passive. Now, the reason this passive guy is here, he's actually really deep, is when you beat the player running short side, all of a sudden, this play here, especially on an ML because you're live, you can score. He's got to come in and make the touch on the ball carrier. And this guy has to make the touch on the link. That's in a perfect world. Now, if your runner here was up here just punching through the hole like normal, it means that winger can get a good read. And if they try and throw the flat ball to the link, the winger can, winger can just come in and shut it down. But if you're nice and deep and you're running an outline, this link here going inwards can't turn and chase you. But that winger, it's too much ground for him to cover to actually come and snipe that play. But in this case, they've actually gone for the long ball. So as the winger has actually come in at the last minute, panicking, thinking, oh shit, the guy's passive. Oops, excuse the language. But he's gone over the top. So that was a nice view of a passive line. Uh, when we run passive line, a lot of the times you might think you're a deep runner, but you are not deep at all. So team that I've um, been with, we practice that 15, 20 minutes before every training session. So it looks like Japan have got in on a rooster. Yeah, middle link fade. Pull and corner. And I think this middle here, who's back on side, one, two, three, need to be moving forward, as I always say. But it's your job to make sure that nothing goes between you and the other middle. Because we can't expect too much from an offside middle. We just need him to protect his short side. Anything on his inside. Now, you can you can uh, work on different ways to, to make it so you can cover an inside. But in as a baseline defense, pull corner, everyone else shut down. Everything else branches off that. So the middle on the far side, he's pointing to his other middle saying, you need to recover, you need to recover. But that's a lot of work for this middle. Okay, Link's done a good job getting off the line. This player, if he was two steps off the line and one step tighter, this is a no try. And because he's on the line and a tad too wide, there's the dive. And try time. Japan look like they hit again. Out ball. Some people call it a chicken, but... Okay, so... And the out ball is, I don't like it how they've got... For analysis anyway, I don't like it how they've got um, multiple camera angles. But it's the middle will pull corner. And normally when you run a rooster, you run into the, into the gap of the middles. Or if you take off from dummy half, you run into the gap of the middle. So we want this middle here to be tight to stop anything going between the gaps of the middles. And the way you answer to that in attack is you hit an out ball, okay? So you're running out by the time this player turns around and you've already got a, a, a speed head start. You're already at three quarter pace while he's just getting a run started. Your job, smash that. As soon as you see that middle angle outwards, you're coming in and you're hitting it because we can't expect this person to cover the middle gap as well as being able to turn and chase an out ball. It's just too much effort. So Link, you've got to get in, jam it, force this player to throw a desperate, if he, he might not even throw a pass because he can't see you, force him to throw a really weird loopy pass that either the winger can get or this player comes around and cover. It's very rare that he'll be able to throw a, a desperation quick pass that's fast and hitting the Link on the chest. But yeah, we just can't try and spread like that and just allow him to run. And that's the way the game ends. To Japan winning 10-4 over England. And it was actually a really high high quality game. I do remember being in the crowd. And there was actually a big crowd um, at State Cup watching this game. It was Sunday morning before the main final series started. Um, and it was great, great to see an international game at Port Macquarie. But uh, thanks for watching. And we will be back shortly with another video. Please subscribe. Thank you very much.